I was born and raised in the message in this church. I thought of God as like someone in the sky. I didn't have any desire. God wasn't real to me. My parents weren't home, so I took advantage of that. Okay. And I invited one of my friends over. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, God just said, all right, it's your time right now. Yeah. And that's how it worked. God came down in my room and I just gave up everything. And then I remember after, immediately after I got saved, I was miserable for yeah. like three or four days. I can't remember exactly how long, but I was miserable. God, the devil just took away my, the joy of my salvation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why. I was just like depressed kind of, but you just didn't know why. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to message tapes and reading my Bible a little bit, kind of getting used to it. I had, I had like read my Bible, listened to message tapes, and I prayed years. So it was, it was, it was different. It was hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, opening up my Bible. I remember sitting in my bed and just being like, I'm going to open up my Bible, and whatever I read, hopefully it's for me. Mm -hmm. And I turned to Matthew, I think it was Matthew 16. I can't, I can't quote it exactly, but mm -hmm. it says, a woman, when she is in travail, she, uh, she's in, when, sorry, a woman, when she's, oh, I can't remember. She's in sorrow and she weeps and laments, but, right. but as soon as she's out of that give, sorrow, give birth, yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she's like, she's like really happy. Yeah. And yeah. then it goes, yeah, and then, I can't remember exactly, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and as soon as I read that, it all went away. Mm. Everything went away instantly. Like the, the, that was the scripture. God took away. That right. was the scripture that, and I, I remember saying that in my testimony in young people's meeting. Right. And uh, yeah, that was my first, like, God is real. Amen. Because, like, instantly yeah. that went away. And from then on, I just kind of dove into it. Mm -hmm. like, like I said, you, you guys just, you just randomly saw me. Yeah. I just, I just forgot about everything. I put my whole past aside. It was very hard because there was a lot of stuff, a lot of stupid stuff. Sure. But, and it was, it was all with the help of God. Like, I could have never done that on my own. I look back now, and you know how you go through, like, trials? Mm -hmm. And when you're going through, you don't really notice it, but when you look back, you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I look back now, and it's like, wow. How, how would I do that, right? So quick, but anyways. Um, where was I? I? I started coming to church as soon as I could because it was camp. Right. So there was like a little bit, like a week of delay because mm -hmm. like just getting back into the normal schedule. So I went to like a Wednesday night service. And I remember Victor got saved, so i t pretty sure I told Victor and it leaked out somehow. I remember I didn't want to tell anyone because I was so like, shy. I was so like, ashamed of it. Mm. Yeah. Um, I didn't even tell my family. First person I told was one of my best friends. Mm. And um, so I started coming to church. And God dealt with me on baptism very quick because I knew that if I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Back to square one again. Right? There we go. Yeah. Because going to the same going to the same school, like everything would just come back, and I knew that. <clears throat> but baptism for me was like impossible because of everything I've done, because like the reputation I had at church, mm -hmm. and just the fact that you're in front of like 800 people. 600, I don't know how many people, but a right. lot of people. Yes. And you just come out of nowhere, and everybody's like, who is this guy? It was very, very hard for me. And even that, I look back now, and I don't know how I did that. It was just all it was God. It was all God. Uh, so, <clears throat> I remember like listening to uh, message tapes on like, baptism and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted it so bad, so bad, but it's just so hard for me to do it. But, one day in, actually before that, I remember I was in church, what kind of like got me 
into the stage where I knew it was baptism. I don't know if it was you or Brother John, but um, it was at the end of the service, and someone came up, and they talked about how if someone has an experience, they have something, they have an obstacle, and their walk with God can't continue unless they overcome that obstacle. Right. And as soon as, as soon as whoever said that, I can't remember, whoever, whoever said it said it, I knew it was baptism, so that's kind of what I said. You got to get baptized because before that, I was like, I'm just gonna go to heaven. Like I, I got saved. I don't need baptism. Mm -hmm. God will have grace on me. Yes. Obviously, that's, that's just the devil telling you that. Um. So, one one day, I think it was. I don't know how long after it was after I got saved. Probably like two weeks, maybe. Okay. Give or take a couple of days, I was in. I was in. Uh, I think it was a Wednesday Wednesday night service, and I had like I was sitting in the service the whole service. I just had my plan on how I was going to go talk to Brother John. Cause I'm pretty sure yeah, it was Brother John preaching. I had like my plan in my head. I'm going to go talk to him after. I'm going to go ask him if I can get baptized, and it'll be done. <laughs> and. Uh, I know I kind of thought it wasn't going to happen, but I just, I just wanted it so bad that I had it all wrapped up in my mind. So that was like one of the first times where it was kind of like God did it. Like I was just sitting in my seat, and then I all, just, I all of a sudden just like got up and walked without even thinking, you know. And I walked to the, like, you know, where just down, you know where, like, all the, preachers walk out yep, yep. that door and yep. I waited for like 20 minutes 25 minutes for Brother John to come out and as soon as he came out I just bursted out in tears I was, I was so like it was so hard for me mm. and uh, I talked to him I remember him saying after I asked him I remember him saying um, this is a lifetime thing. You know, right. This isn't just. This isn't just a moment. a moment thing. Like this is your whole life, and that's when I really, really sank deep. And from then on, it was kind of like I took it more serious. Right. But yeah. And so, another thing he said was, "Why don't you change schools?" <laughs> he yeah. Me, he's like, oh, "That was tremendous." Why? Why deal with? Uh, Everything you used to do, all your old friends and temptations when you could, when you don't have to, sir. But as soon as, when he said that, I kind of just, I didn't really care because it was like four or five days till school started. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I kind of shrugged that off. But I, I really wanted it. I really mm. wanted it for some reason. Isn't that great? Because it's just so it's stress free. You know? <laughs> you don't have to deal with anyone. Like you just leave everyone behind. So I kind of thought of it and thought of it, and then God just worked it out. Like my parents asked me, I was like, "Sure, why not?" The opportunity came up, and He just worked it out fast. And that was one of the first things that really grounded me. Mm. I, want, I want to say because it, I, I, I did, it happened so fast. My whole experience happened so fast, mm -hmm. but it was all because I left everything in the dust, kind of. Right. You know? Right. I just like abandoned everything. Um, it's a clean cut decision. Yeah. And then, yeah, I got I got baptized the week after, I, or the Sunday after I talked to Brother John because I just wanted to get it done with. I knew I had to do it, so right. why wait? Right. That was my attitude. Just next step, next step, next yep. step. Yep. So I got baptized the next the next Sunday and. Um, and then went to went to BCA, and from then on it was just like kind of like I'm not gonna say miracle after miracle, but it's just God kind of grounding me. And I'll give you a couple, sure. couple uh, experiences. They're not major, but yeah, it's just fine. it's personal to you. Yeah, right? you know? it's real. First of all. My job, I knew I had to get rid of my job. I used to work at Earl's. Okay. And it's not the best place to work for a new uh, new Christian. Right. 
Um, so that was hard for me because I, uh, I worked hard. I worked hard there. I really worked my reputation up there. Uh -huh. To just abandon it was really hard, and I had a lot of friends there. But I knew I had to do it for some reason. Very hard for me, but eventually I just did it like that. Like once again, like when I was sitting in the front seat, I just did it without thinking. And another experience when that happened was um, I was sitting where I normally sit, mm -hmm. second row, um, probably maybe a month, two months after I got baptized. And my dad had, uh, his lungs were bleeding. Right. Or his throat. That's I right. I can't remember. And it was worse than it ever was. So I kind of felt like I should go up for prayer for him. Because he, he wasn't at church. Mm -hmm. And I prayed with you. Yeah. And that was another moment when I, I kind of just did it without thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's weird how that always happens. Whenever that happens, like something amazing happens. And God did something special. Yeah. And... And I went up for prayer. I believe you prayed with me, and I think it was the next day he was yeah. completely healed. Yeah, so right. it's just kind of like miracle after miracle. It's so been glorious, John. Indicating it, and I look back at my life now. Like we just went on a China trip, right? A missionary trip, and just how God moves so fast, and how I'm just grateful, you know? Yeah. Really grateful because my life changed so fast, and. I, I got to skip a lot of the boring, like, hard, hard, like, trials. I just did it fast, mm -hmm. and I just jumped into it, and I'm really happy God helped me do that, because yeah. I know I could have done it on my own. Yeah. So, I'm just grateful. Well, you've been a, you know, I, I you know, use the word blessing, but it's more than a blessing, Brother John. You've been an encouragement to a lot of families. Because they themselves have maybe a, a daughter or son that maybe is a little bit wayward. And then all of a sudden God sovereignly deals with you because you heard of a testimony mm -hmm. of another young man. And you made a decision. Yeah. And uh, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you did it. God came, saved you, <laughs> right? You just walked right in it. And God just kept on doing supernatural things for you. And to think, you know, Brother Brown says, you know, you make a, a right decision. He says the decision you make today will determine where you'll be five years from now. Mm -hmm. And who would have thought just a short while ago, you just give your life to Christ and you just come back from a glorious missionary yeah. trip in China. Yeah. I say, the Lord's been so good to you, John. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, it's just, he's blessed you too mm -hmm. for, for what you've stood for. Yeah. And we're proud of you, very proud. And obviously you have, everybody has trials every of day. Course. You make mistakes every of course. day. You die to yourself. But. <laughs> That's why we, yeah. we relish in the blood. We claim the blood. Amen. Well, Brother John Waldner, we appreciate you giving us your testimony. Thank you. And your time. And uh, I trust it's been a blessing for you. Um, it's always amazing to me. You know, you don't you hear so often, you say people got saved at church. But here's a young man who's at home and God's dealing with him, surrenders his life to Christ. His life's turned around and, and he's been a, a strength uh, to our young people and a, and a blessing to our, our families in the church. And we thank you for taking this time with us, Brother John. No problem. God bless you. Thank you very much.